All right. So geometric. We talked about arithmetic Friday, right? Arithmetic is when there's a constant difference between terms. Geometric is when there's a constant ratio between terms. And what do I mean when I say ratio? How do you find a ratio? Divide. Divide. Um, so again, and a lot of you ask me, why does the difference have to be the second term minus the first term? Why can't you look at what you add each time? And we do that so that you're in the habit of doing second term minus the first one. Because when we divide on geometric, we do um, second term. Let me, let me actually do one that is geometric first. 625, 125, 25, 5, 1. So you tell me, is that geometric? Yes or no? Most likely, Most likely since I put it up there, it is. Uh, what's the ratio between the numbers? Okay, you're looking for the pattern, but I just want to know the ratio. It's divided by 5. So remember how we want to do, we want to look at this term and divide it by this term. So what is the ratio? One fifth. So just like for difference, we use the variable D. For the ratio in geometric series, we're gonna, our sequences, we're going to use R. I know that just blows your mind. Just try to hang on, though. Just try to hang on. All right. So the deal is, though, just like with arithmetic, it has to be the same ratio for every single one. If even one of them is off, then it's no longer geometric. On your half sheet, am I going too fast so far? Y'all okay? All right, on your half sheet. Oh, that's just Yeah. What is the recursive? So recursive is whenever we base it on the term before it instead of the actual term number. We'll get to that, but not yet. So we're under geometric, and we're still in explicit, and we're only going to work with that first formula today, which is a sub n equals a sub 1, which we know means what? First term. First term. Times, these are a little bit trickier, R, and the exponent is n minus 1. And again, R is my ratio that is between all terms. So you're scared of this one? Wow. Right. It's just cumulative. Can we have to graph this? Mm. Um, comic sections will be very heavily graphed. <laughs> yes, that's the next chapter. That's the last chapter, right? Yeah. That's the last chapter will do. Let me give you one. Let's write a rule for it. Um, four twenty. No, I don't want another five. Four twenty. That's my job. That's my job. One. One fifty-two. Negative seventy-six. 38, negative 19, dot, dot, dot. Any geometric sequence does have an exponent in it, yes. So the first thing I need to do, of course, is to find um, it's really going to have more to do with the R than it is the exponent because each term is going to alternate even or odd for the exponent. So what's my R here? Um, one over two. Oh, come on. Come on. One over two A. Negative over two 19 a. over 38, which is? Oh, that's a big one. Right? 
All you had to do was negative one. What's 19 divided by 38 or 38 divided by 76 or 76 divided by 152? Woo, I didn't think we'd hit a snag there, guys. Are we good? The R. Look, what is negative 76? Take out your calculator. What is negative 76 divided by 152 and then hit math, enter, enter to get a fraction? Oh my gosh. Woo! Wait, what are we plugging in? OMG, I quit. Okay, negative 76 divided by 152. You always do second term divided by first term. Because they just did every single one, it has to be this. If you divide this one by 152, you have to get negative a half. If you divide 38 by 76, again, negative a half. 19 divided by 38, negative a half. You have to get it for every single term when you divide. Are you all with me now? Because let me tell you on your test, there's going to be some that are just a listing of numbers, and it says... Tell whether the following sequence is arithmetic or geometric or neither. And why? So if you're, if you're adding the same thing to every term, it's arithmetic. If you can divide and get the same thing each time, and don't think there might not be one where it'll be a half for all but one of them. Plus that could happen. So you've got to check them all. Got to check them all. Okay. All right, so R is negative 1 half, so now we're going to plug into the formula. A sub n equals, what is the first term? 152. What is R? Negative 1 half. I'm going to put it in parentheses since it's a negative here, so it doesn't look like subtraction. And then n minus 1. And that's your answer. That's your answer. It's as easy as that, even though we seem to be mind blown. Shh, shh, shh. That's the answer. That's all you have to write. Listen, this is scenario number one. Okay. Write a rule given the entire sequence. What if I asked you to find a, so, or what if I asked you to find the 15th term? You plug 15 into the end into the end. If I asked you to find the 15th term, then you would do 152, negative 1 half. So it follows the same rule. It does. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you simplify. Just make sure as you do this, if you're doing it in separate steps or as you put it in your calculator, exponents come first. So you do negative 1 half to the 14th, then you'd multiply it by 152. What do you get there? Hit math enter enter. <laughs> All right, so negative one half to the fourteenth. Oh yeah, and then you gotta times it by one fifty two. Nineteen over two thousand forty eight. Well, you got to look. So if the ratio is a half, that means they're getting smaller as you go. So if you look, if at the fourth term you're at 19 and you're cutting in half each time, well, by the time you get to the 15th term, it's going to start getting into crazy fractions. Um, sh 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 guys, I need y'all to stay focused, okay? Um, if it were going up, if the ratio was two instead of a half, then it'd be really big as I moved on. All right, scenario two. Write a rule. Guys, stop talking about how old you're going to be in what year and pay attention to this. Sorry. Write a rule given a term and the R. In other words, maybe I said A sub... A sub 5 is 54, and R is 3. Now, this time the ratio is 3, which means what? 
What's happening to my numbers is I'm moving down the sequence. Okay. Okay. They're getting bigger, right? They're multiplying by three as I go. Instead of dividing by, fractions make it smaller, whole numbers make it bigger. Or not just whole numbers, but numbers bigger than one. Yes. All right, so I have my R, right? That's already been done. So what I want to do is I want to plug in to find a sub 1. Now here's where you're going to have to use some knowledge of roots. All right, look. If a sub n equals first term, r is 3, right, to the n minus 1. Let's plug this term in so we can find a sub 1. 54, first term, 3, minus 1. Plus 3 to the 4th. How do you solve that? Divide by 81. Does that simplify down? I'm sure it does. Two-thirds. So what that means is that my rule is a sub n equals first term, what's r? It's the same process we were doing. The only difference is now we have exponents and multiply. Yeah, some of them do get kind of... Are y'all okay? You need me to do another one like this? Okay. Last scenario, write a rule given two terms. So we did this with arithmetic Friday. And I showed you a little shortcut, a way to find D when you didn't have it, when you just had two terms, right? I'm going to show you how to find R when you have two terms. And that will make our life a little easier. So let's see. Let's say I had A sub 3 equals 45 and A sub 5 equals 405. First thing I'm going to do is find R. Find R. To do that, since we're talking about ratios, right? I'm going to divide the two terms. 405 divided by 45. And I'm going to set them equal to R. But the exponent that I'm going to use here, the same order that I'm going to divide, I'm going to subtract exponents. So I'm going to do 5 minus 3. So divide the term, subtract the exponents. So 9 equals r squared. Now, 3 equals r. So this one's easy because it's a squared. What if that had been r to the third? What would you do, though? No, not that. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff I need. Stuff that has to be one thing. What if you had 27 equals r to the third? How would you solve that? Oh, yeah. It's still three. It's still three because so of this. I thought you meant like if what it was is, still equal to nine and it was r. Oh, no, no, no. Like what, all I'm saying is you're going to have to take the root. Whatever's on the r, you'll have to take that root. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Yes, for us, yes. You did something wrong. Um, now, that root, that root could be something like, um, well, right, like maybe I have, 81 over 64 equals uh, r cubed. 
Actually, let me make this 27. Yes. I know, it messes up my, my whole... Right, so if you cube root, so you see what I'm saying, Palmer? It's not, I mean, it still comes out as perfect roots on top and bottom, but it's a fraction. It's not a nice whole even number, but still, yeah. Yeah, no. All right, so now I have two terms as well as R, so I'm good to go to go ahead and find my rule now, right? You thought we were done, but we're not. Because A sub N equals... What? No, that was just a side note. A sub N equals first term times R to the N minus 1. And I am going to use 3 and 45. Why? Because they're smaller. So 45 equals first term times 3 squared. Does that confuse anybody? 3 minus 1, because I put in 3 for n. So now 45 equals a sub 1 times 9, divide by 9. So the first term is? So what is the rule? Yes. A sub n equals first term times r to the n minus 1. 